So I've been thinking recently of my deep dive on Jace and how well his stats came across. Also, just how, how friendly he was, how appreciative he was of the deep dive that I did on him. Giggity. And that he you know, shared, shared the post. You know, just a real sort of nice, genuine guy. And I, I, I sort of, I'm getting to a point now because there's only so few traders that I've got on my list and I've got so few funds right now. Obviously it's building as the, the months go on uh, in regards to how much I deposit and how much I make, therefore ultimately how much I have. But it's seeming I'm like getting a small group of, a small circle of uh, people or traders that, are, you know, that, that talk to me or, you know, su support me in a sense, or so that's not just sort of professional, like, hello, I'm going to, I'm going to add you onto my list. Let's not say anything to each other. Just uh, let's pretend nothing happened. I'll add you and uh, yeah, I'll uh, never talk to you. And I don't know, Jazzy, you know, uh, his stats was good. I made a deep dive about him. We had an email chain back and forth. We both learned things from each other. And it, it kind of, it gave a little extra something. And uh, I appreciate that connection, if you will, uh, even stronger than, you know, a random person. And I feel like I'm starting to get that with Jace as well. Jazzy and Jace. And that got me thinking, ah, I don't have the minimum $320 for Jace right now. I have $9. <laughs> so it's like, who can I get rid of? Mm, I like all of my people. And it took me a while to decide with S-Man. If I wanted S-Man out of the three that I was choosing from, out of the high risk people, which was between S-Man, Isbell, and Matty and Mick. Uh, all three of them very good stats for last year. And ultimately I decided to go with S-Man at the time. Uh, partially because, well, Matty and Mick stats wasn't, wasn't as good as Isbell. So I guess in a way it's kind of between Isbell and S-Man. But Isbell's drawdown was like minus 20 and S-Man's was like minus 11 or something. So. It seemed a bit, bit better in that sense, even though Isbell's performance was better. It was like 289% rather than 245. And also like the picture, um, I don't know, you know, I'm like with pictures, I love my pictures. <laughs> and then just, as well as seeming very like, uh, hi, I'm very good looking and modelly. I model and stuff. As well as that, it's like, <clears throat> it's like breaking his neck and that. Uh, <laughs> I don't like the angle of the neck. <laughs> it makes me feel weird. But um, other than that, yeah. So I made a post. This is in regards to the video that I just uploaded. The, the one that I originally had in the thumbnail and title, important. And, you know, I believed that. I thought this was, you know, important news. Everyone needs to know this. People need to know how the risk score is based, how it affects copying, how it affects synchronization. That it's not actually showing the true number. It's just showing what they've invested, not how it's gone up six times and how fast it's done it. You know, that's what the risk score should show. How far, how fast and how far it's jumped in value, how quickly it's done it. Um, after 24 hours of that video being up, I kind of felt, I kept thinking about it, I kind of felt, Mm, it looks, there's something weird about it. It feels a bit clickbaity. Even though I feel the message is important, I don't want to come across like that. So I've edited the, the thumbnail. So this is the, the thumbnail now. I changed the name of it a bit so it's not like important. You know, so I'm sorry if it come across like a, a bit of a dickish move. Um, I honestly didn't mean to do it. I've rectified that now. I've changed the thumbnail and the title. But well, at the time, S-Man actually left a comment on, on that post. Um, so sort of going against or fighting against in a way of the, the point that I was trying to make, which was that, you know, we need to try and help the copiers out by being in sync. 
Um, so I'll go over it very quickly. So, um, you know, he's saying, uh, I guess most of us are fully aware of this, um, which I don't believe is the case. Um, you have to consider there's never 100% sync between the copiers and the PI. I agree, but I mean, if you're jumping from 2.88% to 18%, that's, you know, it could it could improve, I, I think. Uh, so for long-term investors, it's harder to achieve this. Uh, keep our positions for a long time. Um, but again, it comes back to which type of trader do you want to be? Do you want to be sort of more copier based for eToro where you sort of more tend to their needs and do things for them essentially so that eToro pays you? because you're, you know, you're doing well for your copiers, or you could be a solo trader and a long-term trader, <clears throat> like on a private account sort of thing. And then you can you know, keep the percentages however high you want. Uh, let's look at the example at Sparkly Inc. One of the most copied best traders here in eToro. He has almost 900% increase in one of his positions. Those copiers do not get to in portfolio. So he's talking about Shopify here on Sparkly Inc. profile. Um, so yeah, there is a bit of out of sync issue, but the starting number is a bit smaller, about half the size of S Man's, and it's only going to ten percent rather than eighteen. But yeah, that's a valid point. I don't you know, condone that though, having such a drastic value. Um, there are people that have almost forty to thirty to forty percent value in Bitcoin and other stocks. Uh, some people even have thirty to fifty percent in two stocks. Um, I mean, but that's not good. I mean, we. Shouldn't, we shouldn't really be comparing ourselves to, you know, to other people that's also in a similar position. I, I believe it's not great to have something that's so out of sync. Um, and that's the end of it, really. I wouldn't want to copy these people that have 50% value in something. He's saying, um, I agree with you that the desync is quite a lot, but otherwise it's not a big issue. Um, I mean, this still needs to be proved. Um, I mean, he did make a, a point recently that I was copying him and the um, the difference between what I made and what he made wasn't, you know, miles apart. But generally, I think it is a big issue and it can go out of control and something needs to be done. Maybe eToro needs to step in. So he's saying he is aware of this issue. And he is going to close some NEO positions to reduce the desync of copiers very soon, which is uh, good. Even though it's not really that much. Uh, again, it's a, a difference of opinions, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah. Um, we'll notify them before that happens. So good. And then you've got uh, Isabel on the flip side. Where it's like, very good value video moth. <laughs> you know, it's having some humor making a joke because uh, the video is about value. Uh, I agree with S Man. The problem is mostly long term investors like myself. Etoro could keep basing the risk score on the invested percentages. Um, for now, new copiers then gr try gradually altering the risk score for old copiers as the value amount goes up for them. That would make them close their positions more often and then maybe start again, which would be good for better syncs. But again, it's bad for long term copiers and investors alike. I think this platform was built on the basis of people copying traders and day traders. Yeah. So he's coming across with a bit of humour, you know, and uh, coming up with suggestions. He's not really um, biting back as much as S-Man. But to be fair, I mean, I did put S-Man in the spotlight as an example in the previous video. So, I mean, I, I guess I understand why maybe he's sort of coming across as a bit more defensive, like other people are doing it, it's fine. Um, but, I mean, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the point is that I don't think the, va the value being so drastically far apart and higher than the invested amount is a good thing. And I think something needs to be done. Either the traders need to do something and be a certain type of trader, as I mentioned a few times, or eToro needs to do something because it's uh, it's not great. I mean, if I was going to add in Jace, which I am, I think S-Man would be the one that I, I would replace, even though S-Man stats are really good. So I definitely will be looking at S-Man again in the future. The other thing as well is that with S-Man, I, I totally overlooked the fact that he'd added funds. So I, I was already copying him and he was saying, oh, I'm, I'm copy AUM blocked now because uh, he was a blue star and like no one can copy me. And I was just in the, the, a little bubble like, oh yeah, I'm already copying him. And he was like, oh, I'm adding funds. Um, and when I do, I'll be a red star. People can copy me again. So I was just on the, in the mindset like, oh, that's cool. People can copy him again. 
I, it totally went over my head that he was adding funds. So I've actually been out of sync with him for a while. Um, so his, his smallest position, I think, is 2.9, 0 0.29. So 100 divided by 0 0.29. So I need at least 350, I'd say 360. Um, and, I, and I was on 320. I've actually done some anticipation for adding Jace. So I've actually took some funds out and added the remainder to Hugo and Jay. Um, so that when I do withdraw the $24, it will be about $30 and it would be 320 because uh, 320 is a minimum for Jace. Um, even though, and I'm on the edge now, like, I kind of want to add Jace instead, so it's like there's two things wanting me to swap out S-Man with Jace. And if I did add 360 or 350 onto S-Man, he would be either on a par with J or more than J. And right now I don't feel comfortable having someone out outperform J on the uh, invested side because uh, I trust J a lot more than, um, than S-Man, to be quite frank. Um, and I'd rather keep Jay in the lead. Um, I like what he's doing. I've been watching him for a long time. So I'm going to add Jace. And we're going to swap out S-Man. I'm kind of in two minds about it. Um, I don't want to be like bitchy, even though that's how I'm coming across. But I, I don't know. There's just there's, there's two things pointing to swap out S-Man to Jace. So I'm going to do that. And it's, at the moment, it's only 7.30 a.m. And the market doesn't open until about half two. So we're going to have some time to kill until then. Hey, guys, and welcome back. Um, it's actually been 24 hours or over 24 hours since um, I did the last record because uh, President's Day was a thing on Monday. Um, so now we're here. Let's have a look. So we can see that um, S-Man is gone now. So let's add Jake's. Okay, so when I checked yesterday, Jace did have a 6% invested in Neo, um, which I did find uh, a bit scary because if that's going to exponentially increase like it did before, that means the, the value would have gone absolutely insane, uh, potentially. So I can see now, luckily, um, his, his highest... His highest asset is a 2.78, which is indeed Neo, um, and then equally the same as uh, ADMP. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this now. Um, everything is in, in sync. Um, Neo is only, I mean, it's, it's less, uh, the value's less than what it's invested. So really happy with all this. Um, I can see though, that instead of 0 0.32, the minimum size is now 0 0.31. which uh, 322 is the minimum. Um, and ideally, you want to go quite a bit more than that. Um, and I managed to get 327 out of uh, S-Man's uh, closing. So ideally, 330 would be good. Um, haven't quite got that. Um, um, unless, unless I can temporarily steal the 10 back that I put on Hugo. Um, Yes, okay. Because I, I put on 10 uh, onto Hugo yesterday as, um, you know, not <clears throat> not copy open trades. So I, I'll, I'll remember to put more back on Hugo. So I'll, I'll steal that from you for now. So sorry. <laughs> so I'll put 330 on Jace. That will cover some of the uh, extra fees and stuff. So let's go 330. Copy open trades. And go. Cool. Well, there we go. Jace is now part of the team. Well, that does it for this video. Uh, managed to copy Jace VXR. Um, looking forward to good things, hoping for good things, and I know good things are going to come from it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Cheers.